Shocker time! Hey everyone, I'm Sam Shocker. Thanks for tuning in. We have a really good show today. I'm a huge fan of our guests. I'm so excited. So without further ado, our co-host today, our very own Brie Esrig. You can subscribe to her YouTube channel at Brie Esrig. First time in the oh Pop God. Trigger studio, AFI frontman Davey Havoc is here! Woo! Also of Extremist and Black Audio, an author of a really cool pop culture book called a novel called Pop Kids. Stay tuned for his interview. You guys are going to eat it up. And of course, Brett Ehrlich. You guys can check him out on, on Viral Video Film School. And also, do you know when your uh, year in review? December 23rd on ABC at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock. Yes. Sorry, Robin time. Roberts. And we're going to do the year. And you can catch me live at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 Eastern on Dr. Drew on Call on HLN. And then this Sunday on CNN. I don't know what time, but tune in. All right, let's get to know our guests a little bit more, shall we? Ooh. Davey's on the hot seat. So, Davey, I, of course, grew up listening to AFI. You know that, because we, Bree and I recently met Davey at, at Loveline, and I freaked out when you were the guest because I listened to AFI growing up. That's really so, AFI, uh, I, if people aren't familiar with AFI, please check them out. But they've been around for, what, 20 years? 24 years. We started in 1991. Wow. So, what is the secret to, uh, to the longevity of being in a band that, that's over 20 years now? We tend to have very similar goals. We have a lot of similar influences. We've switched members. I, yeah. I mean, we're not the original lineup. The, the lineup that began in 1991 uh, had two How different members. How old were members. you um, at the time? Five. <laughs> <laughs> five, six. But you're a total like uh, garage uh, punk band in your, in, in your garage. We, we were actually in Adam's garage. Adam is one of the original members. Right. And we've kept the lineup that wants to make music. Yeah. And that's that's really the most important thing and we're um as a whole a lot of us are drug free. Can we talk about the straight edge movement now just because I think this is a really great topic to transition to because okay. Extremist is a straight edge hardcore band. Extremist is a straight edge hardcore okay. band. Okay. So, yeah. And we've talked about straight edge here on the show before and I would get uh, some of our viewers writing in what is straight edge or some people identifying with straight edge okay. which I thought was really cool. That's cool. So for the ones that aren't familiar with straight edge, I grew up uh, in a very strong straight edge community in Santa Cruz. So mm. I was very familiar with it and followed it in yeah, high school. Yeah, there was a it's, strong scene there. So for those that aren't familiar with straight edge and straight straight edge uh, uh, hardcore music, mm -hmm. uh, please tell our viewers what they can expect from that. First of all, Straight Edge is a movement that comes out of hardcore music that is based in self-respect and respect for others through the abstinence of and opposition to drug use. Yes. Opposition to drug use. Right. Um, to differentiate between being simply sober or drug free. It is um, confrontational. And uh, it came out of the DC hardcore scene in yes. the early 80s. Minor Threat, Minor Ian Threat, McKay, who I Teen love. Teen Idols, oh. uh, State of Alert. A lot of, lot of DC straight edge hardcore bands. And I mean, I could talk about that movement for quite a long yeah. time. There are different um, generations of it. There's you know, the youth crew scene that came in the, in the mid and to late 80s. And then the, the vegan straight edge uh, that came in the early 90s. Yeah, because they're big on social issues too, which I love. So there was a little bit of bad press, which really pissed mm -hmm. me off. And I think that was attributed to something that was put up on Yahoo Answers, where that some people were really violent. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there's bad people mm -hmm. in every subculture, but yeah. for the most part, straight edge, they're not only you know abstaining from like drugs and alcohol, but they're really big advocates for equal rights, equal justice, animal rights, uh, pro-feminism. And, and it's amazing. Yeah. I think that's such a great, especially for youth. I know when I was in high school, uh, I wasn't into partying just because there was addiction in my life. Yeah. So that wasn't attractive to me, but I still felt the peer pressure to like drink and smoke of and course. do those things. But then when I got into like Minor Threat and the punk rock scene, I was like, wow, I can identify with this and feel proud of it. And I think that's great to offer kids that movement as well. Yeah, there are, I mean, it was very interesting for me. I discovered it having an aversion to that aspect of alternative culture, which is self-destructive and that really focuses on, um, uh, you know this this nihilistic behavior that I, didn't appeal to me. I really felt that what I was into artistically was so forward thinking. So when I discovered the straight edge movement, I realized that there were people who shared my affinities and my aversions. And from that moment on, is is when I I claimed the movement. And I mean that pressure that you feel as um, as a teenager. I mean, it still exists as an adult. I mean, it certainly doesn't affect me and never has. But I mean, we really live in a culture wherein recreation and drug use go hand in hand mm -hmm. and if you don't partake in recreational drug use you are perceived as odd yeah now when you say confrontational what do you mean by confrontational toward drug use uh, that we stand against it we 
as as a movement, as straight edge, we don't simply believe that oh that's okay that people do drugs. It's not okay. Mm -hmm. We believe truly that the world would be a better place if there were no recreational drug use. So if you is it does it like uh, you know come forward in the lyrics or mm -hmm. are there like uh, activities like demonstrations um, that it, happen? It's it's presented mostly within the lyrics of the music as it as it, it comes out of hardcore music and it is that directive comes forth in the in the music and in the lyrics. So that's where you hear that's where you hear you, the, So in extremist extremist is, is is it you just launched the first or launched the very first album for extremist just yes. last month, yeah, right? Yeah, November. And, November. And Steve Aoki um, yeah. put it out. Steve who cool. was a part of the hardcore scene um, growing up and and that's how we met. There was a house in Santa Barbara called Pickle Patch that all the hardcore kids would say, "Do you wow. know the Pickle Patch?" No, I love what oh, she likes. Okay. Loves the sound. I do too. There were a lot of pickles yeah. everywhere. Oh my god, really? I they love it. Making oh, pickles? No, there were no pickles. Mm. And they're performing. Uh, so you cool, guys, though. is Extremist performing at the Roxy on January 28th? Correct. Oh my god, so Southern California uh, fans, you guys can go to the Roxy January 28th to see Extremist. We're going to be there. I'm definitely going to be there. I cannot wait. Fantastic. Yeah. And then I know we have to move on, but I wanted to talk about Pop Kids too because I think cool. our viewers would eat it up. It's a novel that you wrote. You're finished with it, but now you're doing the audio track I'm into it, and an you're audio. working on a second novel. Yes, yes. So Pop Kids, the the novel came out maybe a year ago. Year okay. And a half ago. The audio book is in process. <laughs> yeah. The audio book I'm tracking now. Okay. Uh, of the first novel, Pop Kids, which deals with the effect of modern media and the cult of celebrity on youth culture, particularly youth culture in isolation. Um, it's quite dark, yet my engineer, I believe, will attest that it sometimes will give you a laugh within the context of its I think our bleakness. viewers would love it. I watched the trailer. He's a trailer for his book, you guys. Oh, a trailer for his book. Little, Maybe little, we can provide the link to the trailer. Yep. And also, if you want to pick up Pop Kids, go to popkidsbook.com. Check out Extremist January 28th at the Roxy. And they can also pick up uh, the album in stores and online, right, Extremist? Absolutely. Okay, cool. Big round of applause for Davey Havoc. Stay tuned. We'll see you guys next time on Pop Kids.